In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to isolate all the different halogens from their compounds, or at least all the halogens that are able to be isolated. Uh, fluorine is so incredibly reactive that I don't believe that there's any way to chemically separate it from its compounds, and astatine is radioactive and doesn't really exist in more than a couple of atoms at a time. So what I have here, going from left to right, um, I'm going to make iodine, bromine, and chlorine. Um, on the left hand side I have a solution of potassium iodide. In the center is sodium bromide and on the right is a little bit of potassium permanganate uh, which doesn't have chlorine in it but I'll explain that when I get to it. Here I'm going to show the different degrees of difficulty associated with extracting these elements from their compounds. So going from left to right it's going to go from easy to hard. So on the left hand side again as I said is potassium iodide and all that is required to isolate iodine is the addition of sulfuric acid or any mineral acid and you can see it just immediately precipitates this black solution of suspended iodine elemental iodine crystals So that's all that's required for iodine. Next is the sodium bromide. Now that requires, again, adding sulfuric acid. But this alone isn't quite enough to oxidize the sodium bromide all the way to bromine. Uh, it just makes hydrobromic acid. So we have to take it one step further and add an oxidizer. And in my case, I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide. So we'll add a good amount of that just to make sure that it's in excess. And you can see there's a bit of a color change apparent. And I'm going to take that out and swirl it around a little bit. And you can see it's getting a little yellow uh, as the reaction proceeds. But uh, let's try and stir that up a little bit with the glass rod here. There we go, now I'm finally getting all the salt to dissolve into solution. And you can see it's a nice yellow color. Uh, that means it's on its way to full oxidization. I think I'll add a little bit more peroxide. And you can see the peroxide sort of forms a layer above the rest of it, which is why it requires mixing. So now you can see on the bottom in particular it's a, it's a bit darker. Uh, bromine is a very dark brown liquid when you've isolated it in pure elemental form. Uh, what I have here is bromine water. Uh, it's just bromine dissolved in water. The first time I did that it came out a little bit better. Uh, perhaps I didn't add everything in the correct proportions, but anyways, uh, you get the idea. Um, back to the left here on the iodine, you can see some of it is, is settling out. So that's, that's definitely precipitated in a solid form. So we've got solid iodine on the left. Uh, aqueous bromine in the center and on the right I'm going to make chlorine. Chlorine
chlorine is a bit different um, because it's a gas and again it's harder to isolate than the other two so what I have to do is extract it from hydrochloric acid uh, and in order to do that I need a very powerful oxidizer which is the potassium permanganate that I've used there so now all I have to do in this test tube is add a few drops of concentrated acid and you'll see it immediately starts to react producing quite a bit of hydrochloric or sorry quite a bit of chlorine gas so we'll let that proceed and I'll cap it off it may be a little bit hard to see here but the greenish color of, of chlorine gas is apparent. Let's add a bit more acid to speed it up. And as you can see, I'm doing this outside, uh, particularly because of chlorine. As I said, chlorine's a gas, uh, and it's a particularly poisonous gas. So it's best to do this outside. Usually when you're working with any halogens, it's a good idea to do it outside. So again, it might be a tad hard to see. But there's pretty distinct greenish color of the chlorine gas filling the tube. And it's actually pushing the, the stopper out of it. There's so much being generated. So, those are the three halogens that you can isolate from their compounds. Chlorine gas on the right, bromine liquid in the center. You can see that's getting a bit darker as, as the reaction has proceeded to completion. And solid iodine on the left. It's a really dark, almost a black crystalline mass. Now it's been a few minutes since I finished this set of reactions and you can see that everything has pretty much gone to completion. Uh, the iodine on the left has all, all but settled out uh, in a solid form. You can see it's just a lot of little particles of it. Uh, the bromine has fully reacted and it's formed a rather beautiful orange and red solution. You can see that the, the red color has more or less settled to the bottom uh, and that's because bromine is a, a pretty dense liquid so it'll it'll settle to the bottom of any solution that it's in and the chlorine is done as well um, I don't know if you can see it on the video but it's a rather pale greenish color uh, and I've tried to bring that out by putting a paper plate behind it and shining some more light on it but I don't know how successful that was so hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching